Hey guys, today we are getting ready testing some new makeup at Sephora. If you guys caught my Sephora haul, you might have got some sneak peeks and first impressions as to what we are trying today. But Sephora has a ton of new stuff. I've been placing some orders here and there for the past month and kind of collected some things that I was excited to try out. So let's get started. Let's start with primer. Now, typically I do not like to try new foundation and primer in the same video, but since I do kind of want to give my thoughts on these in my Sephora video, we're going to try both and see how it goes. Now, I did pick up the new one size primer. This is the Secure the Glow. It's their tacky hydrating primer, so I think similar to kind of the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip or the e.l.f. So I'm curious to try this one. I usually love one size products because they usually work well for my oily skin. This is more glowy, so I'm curious to see how this is going to look, but I do sometimes like a little bit more glowy base. My skin has not been quite as oily as it normally is. I've actually been trying to hydrate a lot more, do a lot more skincare, and I think that's definitely helping. So I feel like my skin is definitely more normal combo, slightly oily. But this looks so fun because it has these little boba beads in it. I'm gonna call it. It just looks fun. So let's try this out on the face. I did about three pumps. I do like quite a bit of product. Those beads kind of burst onto the skin right away and then it kind of goes on like a gel. Feels very kind of watery, hydrating. It's not as sticky as the e.l.f. or the milk makeup but maybe it'll get stickier as it dries down. I think a lot of people love those sticky primers because it really clings on to your foundation, but so far it feels actually very hydrating on the skin, which is good. And as it's drying down, it's definitely not that sticky. It just has a little bit of tackiness to it. Okay, so on top of that, we do have a new foundation. I kind of bought this on a whim just because I'm honestly curious and I wanted one thing from this line. So I picked up something from Prada Beauty, which is a new luxury line at Sephora. You know, we got the Dior Beauty, we got the Givenchy, the Guerlain. Now we have Prada that has just come out with new stuff. They have eyeshadows, lipsticks. I'm sure they're going to be adding more to the line, but I was most interested in the foundation, the eyeshadow. I think they were little trios to me, did not look that interesting, and I feel like most luxury brand eyeshadows just aren't that great. So I thought, if anything, they would probably do a really good foundation, and I didn't really feel like spending over, I think it was almost a $50, was it a $50 lipstick? I don't know. I was very close to buying one, but I'm like, I already have enough lip products here. Let's skip the expensive lip product, but I did want to try out this foundation. This packaging definitely is beautiful. So it looks like this, very luxurious with the Prada logo and everything, which if I am paying a little more, I do want some good packaging. So this is described as an all day soft matte, which I love to hear, seamless and flexible coverage, optimizes light diffusion in real life and on screen with their micro filter technology. So it's going to blur the look of pores and fine lines. It's supposed to improve your skin look over time with more moisturized skin and a healthy glow and somehow it refines skin texture. So I guess it's supposed to also have some skin care in here. Um, I have the shade LC15. This might be a little bit light for me. I have some self tan on now, but we'll see how it goes. So I put about two pumps on my hand and I'm going to go in with the BK101 brush. So far, this feels very nice and lightweight. Overall, I would say this definitely gives a medium coverage to me. It's not too heavy and it's not too light. I have been liking more medium coverage lately since my skin has just been a lot better. In general, I don't really need the full coverage as much as I used to, but that does look really good, very skin-like. It's just slightly lighter than the rest of my skin, so I'm just going to kind of blend this down my neck. Not the best day to do this video, uh, but I had to self-tan the other day for a photo shoot. So, we're working with it. Overall, this just gives a nice skin-like appearance. It seems very buildable. And I really like the formula so far. For eyeshadow, there hasn't been many new palette launches, especially at Sephora, but I am going to be using the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Defining Neutrals Palette. Now, this isn't technically new in YouTube terms, but in regular terms, 
I still consider this a very new palette. It just launched for like the holiday season and it's new to me. I've used it one time. I was pretty impressed with it. Um, but I actually got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. So if you haven't seen that unboxing, I'll have it for you. I just did a shorts video because I just don't know if as many people are interested in those. This is really pretty. I don't usually go for all matte palettes, but this is just like a really nice just like basic palette to have. So let me go ahead and apply this on the eyes. I'm going to go ahead with a BK212 brush and just dip into, let's use this matte color. This is Mirage. And I'm just going to place this in the crease and really fluff it out. I'm just using a fluffier brush so we can really get a nice blended look. But I am so impressed with the quality of these mattes. Next, we're going to go in with this brown. I like this dark brown a lot called Bark. And I'm placing this kind of in the outer corner. I'm going to try to smoke it out a bit. But I just, I think this is such a nice palette to have. I mean, most times I do like a metallic shimmery glittery shadow you guys know that but this is just nice for every day and this is kind of what's trending right now for more natural makeup I could definitely see myself combining this with other things like this Urban Decay Moon Dust palette I like to use a lot but it's all glitters so this is like the perfect thing to have in its place I do like to tap this on the lid this is in the color sandstone so I'm just gonna tap that to really mattify the lid and just kind of cover any of my natural lid color, cover any veining, anything like that. Something that I really didn't realize at first is that these bigger pans are a putty formula and then the smaller pans are a powder formula. So you can easily go with the putty first and do the matte on top like I am doing now. I don't know why it took me so long to realize it. I didn't realize it until I actually like dipped my fingers in because those putties blend out so normal like a normal matte would. I'm going to go ahead and touch up with the powder side. I think having that putty and kind of powder combo really makes for a long wearing eyeshadow. Next, let's go ahead and clean that up with some concealer. We have a new one from Fenty that I've been wanting to try. Um, I feel like last year there was so many good concealer launches, so we'll have to see if this beats them out because right now like on the top of my list is the House Labs concealer and the Natasha Denona one and I'm curious if Fenty will be any good. I know they had a previous concealer but I was never really into that one. I just feel like it didn't really do much for the under eyes so hopefully this is an upgrade. The description says smoothing and blurring for a second skin finish and I have the shade 140N in this one. So I just go ahead and apply like in the inner part and the outer portion and let's just do one little cover up for this one blemish I have down here. Maybe just in this whole area where I have some just post acne marks. I'll blend that out with the BK Beauty, Nikki LaRose, and 16. So that definitely covered pretty good I would say for even the blemish. Just kind of blending that into the skin. And for the under eyes, this is a nice color. It's very brightening. It has like a little bit of a, it's a neutral undertone, but I think it leans just like slightly more yellow. And I feel like that really helps keeping things very bright. I'm just carving out kind of that line. So our outer edge is a little more pointy. I would say that looks that looks pretty good. It's not like ultimate full coverage concealer, but we definitely look brightened and awake. So far so good, but we'll have to see how it looks after a few hours, of course. All right, so I did my brows and my little half lashes off camera. I need to bronze a little extra, so I'm gonna use this one size bronzer. I'm gonna try the darker shades in there because yeah, I need to warm up the skin a bit. But I love this bronzer because I feel like it's very customizable. It has three different tones, so you can always use it too. Like if you're a little darker in the summer, it still works for the winter time when you're a little paler as well. Plus the formula is really nice on this too. So I have the shade Light Trio. I don't have any new blush, so I'm going to use this one from Danessa Myricks. This is their Yummy Skin Blush in It Girl. I got this in like a Sephora set, so hopefully they do sell this one individually as well because I don't know if they still have this set, but if I find it, I will definitely link it for you. But I'm just going to go ahead and apply this on the cheeks. I love this formula too. It's like a 
balm to powder. I just love a good bright pink cheek, but I definitely built it up to that so you could start out a little more sheer too, but I do find her blushes to be quite pigmented. Now for lips, I bought a ton of new lip products, but I decided that this is what we're going to do today. So I have the new Hourglass lip liners here. I ordered the shade Tempt 3, the shade and sculpt lip liners. I mostly wanted to try these because I've heard a lot of people say that these are very long lasting which I do find a little hard to find a good lip liner that actually lasts on the lips all day. So let's try this one on the lips. Again, this is attempt three if I didn't mention. It just has a nice point where I feel like it makes it easy to draw on. Now, for the final touch, we're going in with the Makeup by Mario lipstick. This is from his new line, the Super Satin Lipsticks. This is the shade Midtown. And you guys, I wore this yesterday for my photo shoot. This is like the exact nude color I've been wanting, looking for. I've always loved a kind of light beigey pink like this. And I feel like it's hard to come by because a lot of lip colors, I feel like, lean to pink are very warm. And this keeps it very light nude. This is the kind of lipstick I used to wear, um, I don't know, my early YouTube days. And I still just love this kind of a color, so... Let me show you this on. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Seriously, that is my perfect nude. I'm obsessed with this color. So, so happy about that. I feel like Makeup by Mario just really understands nude lipsticks. Like, he knows the tones. He has a ton of different ones in his line. And this formula is so good. It's a satin finish. still has a little bit of shine, and it's not overly matte. It's seriously perfection. I'm, I'm loving these so much. So after that, that is going to complete this look, trying some new stuff. So far, I'm honestly pleased with everything we've tried, and I want to see how these wear. So I'm going to come back in at least like four to five hours or so and I'm going to show you guys how things are wearing because I feel like it's always important to show how things wear throughout the day as we're kind of busy doing stuff throughout our normal day because stuff always looks great when you first put it on but yeah the true test is how it lasts so I do always like to do these updates so I will see you guys in a bit. Okay guys so I actually went quite a bit longer than I thought I was going to do but it's been seven hours so I wanted to show you how we are looking. I am a little bit shiny and I I got new lights and I feel like they do exaggerate the shine a little bit. I feel like the skin just looks so beautiful even though we do have some shine but mind you I have not touched up once today. I am going to do just a little powder touch up right now just taking this brush. I actually really don't have much product. This is just from leftover product from earlier when I set the face but like this looks perfect. So perfect still on the face. It's beautiful. Like, I really did not want to love this $70 foundation, but this is so pretty on the skin. Like, I cannot deny that. Now, do I recommend spending that much on a foundation? If you do not have the budget for it, I am sure there is tons of foundations that can give a similar effect. But if this is something you've been intrigued about and you've been wanting to try... I think it's pretty. I really do. And I think it works for my combo oily skin right now. It's so pretty and I think mixed with the glow primer that amps up the glow even more and just makes it look so natural so smooth on the skin it's lasted for me all day and I could still go even more hours today with this combination so I'm excited to use these a bit more I'm curious to see how this will wear with maybe a matte primer too see if it gets a little bit less shiny but I'm honestly impressed with this complexion combo today I have to say it I really didn't think I would love it as much as I do, but it's such a pretty finish on the skin. The concealer I do feel like has faded a little bit today. I just have noticed my dark circles being a little more prominent, and even though I feel like this was so brightening at first, I'm wondering if maybe I should have grabbed a shade or two darker. Maybe that's why I feel like my circles are emphasized. I just have extra puffy eyes, so this space right here I feel like is always emphasized sometimes so I'm just noticing a little bit of fading but I think like but I don't feel like it looks dry I don't feel like it looks 
cracked cakey. It's not really settling into lines that much. So I do think this definitely is a hydrating formula. It's definitely more of a medium coverage. So if you need more full coverage, you may want to pass on this, but if you're looking for a nice hydrating formula, I think this is one to check out. I actually cannot believe it, but can you guys still see my lip liner? You guys. My lip liner has not moved, and I literally just got back from eating Mexican. We had chips, salsa, cheese dip, I had a quesadilla. Literally, the lip color is gone, but the liner, the outline, is still there. These hourglass lip liners are truly long-lasting. That has really impressed me today. Usually after a longer day, and then after dinner, my lip liner is usually gone by now. I cannot believe it is still in place. That is crazy to me. So impressed with those lip liners. And also the lipstick, of course, this has worn off to be expected. Anything with shine is not going to last you all day unless you're wearing like a liquid lip. But I do feel like this did last a decent amount of time. I love the formula. It's so comfortable and you guys already know I'm obsessed with this color. Let's go ahead and put a little bit on now. But yeah, this is seriously my perfect nude. This is going to be my go-to shade, I think. For lipstick and I am ready to declutter some lipstick now. I think the Danessa Marks palette is last. I really do enjoy this so much. I've gotten so many compliments already from you guys on my makeup today um, from my Sephora video and it just looks natural but fresh but like you still tried a little bit. I'm usually not into all matte palettes like this but I think this offers something different to the table. I love the mixture of like the putty shades with the powder shades and it's just it's like an all-in-one nice matte palette and something I'm going to reach into for daily wear when I don't want to wear my super colorful looks and all my glitters and shimmers. This is such a good formula. I'm really impressed. It makes me want to try more of her shadows. I know a lot of her other palettes they have some different chromes in them and I'm not sure how her multi-crumbs would compete with the indie brands. But I hope she does start coming out with more just like palettes because I feel like she has such a good formula, especially with her mattes. So I think that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Overall, this was a pretty successful try-on. Excited about a lot of this new makeup. Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, and I think I want to film a drugstore version very soon. Because I love to cater to both. I like, you know, the drugstore stuff. And sometimes I splurge on the super luxury stuff like this Prada foundation. But we cover it all here on my channel. So anyways, I'll have all the products linked for you and also in the YouTube shopping section. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.